What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. I hope this video is better than Monday Night Football last night. Because if not, then we've possibly made the worst video of all time. Because I think this game might be the worst fucking game of all time. However, we smashed Mac Jones under 20 and a half completions or under 21 or whatever the fuck it was. Even by the time it closed, it was like 18 and a half. It's halftime right now. He's one for one. All right, so he's perfect. Maybe they should... Let them fucking chuck it a little bit more. But we'll take our fucking money in ones. Sorry. All right. Waiver wire. That's what we're here to talk about. Waiver wire week 14. Not really an exciting waiver wire at all. There were a lot of injuries this week in the NFL, but none that really moved the needle. None that made us fiend for that next hit. All right. But nonetheless, none the more. Here we are. We must sink everyone's submarines and satisfy y'all out there. So without further ado, let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. All right, so our waiver wire sheet is up on our membership site right now, bg.store, where we have every you know pickup listed by their positional rank, overall rank in terms of the waiver wire pickups this week. Uh, fab that we would put on them, whether, uh, whether or not we'd use the number one waiver wire priority on them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll start with the quarterback position. And again, we only really cover super flex leagues here. I'm not doing the streaming options for y'all. Everyone's got time for that in this economy but Taysom Hill has time for a lot of shit all right and he obviously should have been picked up in your uh, super flex league he might have broken his finger but it doesn't matter because he's a broken player anyways when it comes to fantasy football and he's going to get 422 rushes against the New York Jets next week so if he is somehow available on your wire you throw it all down again in the super flex league on Taysom Hill I think Cam Newton is certainly worth rostering if he was dropped in your super flex league right these these kind of games are going to come and go with cam because of who he is in his career at this point but literally you know we forget about the shit one week before this terrible game he just had he put up 28 fantasy points in not even a full fucking game okay so cam gets to play against the atlanta falcons and the atlanta falcons are pretty fucking bad at football all right tom brady just basically paid his entire 401k against the atlanta falcons it didn't even make any fucking sense it made sense in my head when i said it Anyways, yeah, Cam Newton should absolutely be owned in Superflex League, at least for this week, all right? I did say in the waiver, in the fab guidance column, 12 to 15 bucks, but I'm going to pull that down a little bit because they play Buffalo and then Tampa Bay after that, so it's not a lot of great matchups for Cam. But let's move to the juicier players, all right? Taysom would be my number one overall pickup this week if you are in a Superflex League. We're talking about one quarterback leagues, though. I'll move over to the running back position, and we might have forgot about these two running backs, Dontrell Hilliard and Deonta Foreman, who are both coming off of their bye because Tennessee had the bye. We know Derrick Henry's out. We know Darren Tate Evans out. Jeremy McNichols is what kind of throws a wrench into this formula. However, McNichols really hasn't, he's, he hasn't been a plus EV player for the Titans, right? He's just, he's just out there. Like he does a couple good things. He catches balls and shit, but he's like a player that catches the balls and then falls. Dontra Hilliard and Deontay Foreman, I think are adding to the Tennessee Titans in a positive way in, in, on a team that badly fucking needs someone to, to get into the, to the green here. Last week, Deontay Foreman had 20 touches. Dontrell Hilliard had a bunch of touches as well. They both went over 100 yards from scrimmage. Both look really good. And I think based on all like the rumblings and the rumors we heard leading up to the game about how much they like these two players and then how much they use them and how productive they were, I feel confident that even if McNichols is back for this week, he's either going to be a healthy scratch or be very, very limited in workload. So I like both of these two. They get to play against Jacksonville, which is finally a game script that you know they might actually be winning in and can use the running backs at a really, really high volume. Even last week when they weren't. You know, they're getting their asses kicked. These running backs saw like 35 touches combined between the two of them. So Dontra Hilliard and Dr. Foreman are both my number two and three pickups this week if they're available on your waiver wire. And then we move to the wide receiver position that has like the next three spots. I'm talking about like Russell Gage, KJ Osborne, and Devontae Parker are all in that same tier for me where you're going to throw down between like seven and 10 bucks for them. Russell Gage obviously popped off for another big game. He has his dud games, his big games, like I called him yesterday. He's the black Cole Beasley, man. He's going to he's gonna do good things for you. And he's not competing with Stefan Diggs and Gabriel Davis and Dawson Knox and all these players, right? He just has Kyle Pitts, who's fucking been Pitts up to this point in the season besides like two games. So Russell Gage is basically the, the de facto wide receiver won there in Atlanta while Calvin Ridley's out. He gets Carolina, San Fran, Detroit. So games that he can definitely do some good in there. So Russell Gage has popped off like 130 yards and he does it every once in a while, man. He puts together good games. Uh, it's coming off a big game before that. So he's starting to put a little bit consistency behind it. And it's a good, good thing to see. Now, KJ Osborne, the big news comes from Adam Thielen's high ankle sprain. This was already an extremely tight, tight pass funnel where it was literally only going to Jefferson or Thielen. Jefferson, 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 Thielen, Jefferson, Thielen, Jefferson, Jefferson, right? Like that was the game plan for them, right? Every every once in a while, we have a dump off to Cook, Tyler Conklin a little bit involved. Now Cook's out, now Thielen's out. 
And I think KJ Osborne and Tyler Conklin become like really, really, really good pickups this week if you uh, need to fill either of those positions, because both these guys are probably widely unowned in your leagues. Now, Conklin is someone I, I think this is going to be an underrated injury for him. I think like, you know, we know that he's going to be a good pickup because of this injury, but I actually, I, I really feel like he's going to be a top eight to 10 guy at the tight end position for as long as Adam Thielen is out, which could be two, three, four weeks, a fucking high ankle sprain. So the fact that they're like, he's probably not going to play this week nonsense he's out he's out for multiple weeks if it's a real high ankle sprain pittsburgh chicago the la rams so n- n- yeah the rams are kind of pretty fucking good but pittsburgh and chicago are not teams that you really need to fear defensively anymore so kj osborne is interesting Devonte parker would be higher on this list after a really good game first game back with tua caught all five of his targets for like 65 yards or some shit Jalen waddle still seems to be the one there but parker gets his feet wet, he's going to be really, really good down the stretch. They get the New York Jets after the bye. And that's simply why he's a little bit further down this list because he does still have to go through the bye. But then they get a a, a beautiful, beautiful slate of Jets, Saints, Titans, which are three defenses that you can absolutely fucking chuck the skin everywhere. We have Devontae Parker. We move down the list a little bit more and we get to the Eagles backfield, man. So Miles Sanders is dealing with an ankle injury, which he re-injured the ankle. Problem is they have a bye. There's like 40 fucking problems to talk about here in the Eagles backfield. One, they have a bye. So by the time they get back from the bye, Jordan Howard's likely going to be playing. Miles Sanders, maybe a game time decision. If I had to guess, if I had to put my mother's life on it, I'd say he doesn't play. Sorry, mom. But we can look at this game, right? And Miles Sanders, 24 carries. This is Sunday's game against the Jets. Miles Sanders, 24 carries, 120 yards, caught three of three targets for 22 yards. Now, Gainwell was the other running back that got involved here. Jordan Howard was out. Gainwell saw 12 carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown. He also caught all five of his targets for 33 yards. Hard to take this seriously when the same fucking thing happened like six, eight weeks ago. Same thing, Miles Sanders got hurt. Gainwell took over. And then the next week, it was not Gainwell's week at all. He barely played. So with Boston, Scott, I don't know if like Boston Scott was honestly like obviously should have fucking done prep for this video, but I don't think Boston Scott was hurt at all. I don't think he was hurt at all. I just think he didn't play in this one for whatever fucking reason, which leads me to have a really unsatisfactory answer for you guys. And that's why I'm going to say, because it's so difficult to project what's going to happen in this backfield, if all things equal, Miles Sanders doesn't play. I think they've shown that they trusted Jordan Howard the most, but like, who knows? It could be a Boston Scott game. Also, when they come back from the bye, which is another kind of dagger to this entire situation, they get Washington, who has been a much improved run defense and just overall defense on that side of the ball. So, you know, Jordan Howard, Howard, Kenny Gainwell, five to seven dollars if you want to get cute. Boston Scott maybe in that range, but based off of what we just saw, it's hard to buy into him. So the Eagles backfield, like I get that there might be a nice solid opportunity here because there's fantasy points coming out of this backfield left and right when Sanders is hurt. It's just not like a situation where we're ever going to have confidence in getting one of these guys into our lineup. Anyone else interesting now? We got a bunch of bums like Kendrick Bourne, MVS, Amon Ross St. Brown, Laquan Treadwell. He's got to keep, he's like literally like the centerpiece of the Jaguars offense at this point. It's fucking disgusting. Tyler Conklin, Cole Komet, Foster Moreau. Listen, I know uh, Darren Wall is probably going to play actually. So maybe just completely fucking cut that out. Yeah, that's really it. I mean, you could talk about Tevin Coleman, but I just rather not talk about Tevin Coleman defenses there's a lot of good streaming options this week you get the Saints which would be my top option they're playing against the Jets you have Seattle who's playing against Houston and it's probably going to be Davis Mills the Giants are playing against the Chargers so they're probably not going to be available but the Giants are very likely to trot out Jake Fromm and that's a fucking issue so if you're playing against the Chargers sorry to your playoff hopes Packers at home against Chicago. I love them as a streaming option. The Broncos get Detroit. And uh, if you can hold on to Miami because you picked them up last week, played them last week, let them run through the bye, keep them on your roster because they get the Jets the week after that. The other four teams are not teams that you're going to be able to hold through the following week because the Saints get the Jets and then Tampa. Seattle gets Houston, then LA Rams. Green Bay gets Chicago, then Baltimore. Denver gets Detroit, then Cincinnati. So it sucks because they all, all four of them got good matchups, but they don't get a second good matchup behind them. But the Saints against the Jets are, are money. Seattle against Houston is going to be money. And then the Broncos, or the Packers, Chicago, Broncos, Detroit, Miami hold through them if you can. All right. I think that is all we've got for Zaveva Vaya. If you want to look at the actual chart in depth with the fab guidance and all the other extra information, y'all can go sign up on the website, bdge.store forward slash community. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. And make sure you sign up on Underdog, bro. We're fucking absolutely ripping the over-under props, man. We've been like 9-1 in our last 10 props, all right? 
when you sign up on underdog fantasy i'm gonna be making picks all week throughout the playoffs and all that kind of shit uh make sure you use the promo code bdge when you do so that'll get you a hundred percent deposit match all right i'm out of here mr tony fake intern thank you for the edit you fired <laughs> Wow.